What is architecture? You want to start? You said you start. <laughs> really, did I? Yeah. Okay. Well, um, yeah, what is architecture? I mean, it is a very basic question, very, actually very difficult to, to, to answer. Was one, I mean, it's not wrong to say it's just a uh, handling space and, and, and light and shade and moving through that space. So it means time, so it's these four dimensions. That's the very, very basic uh, yeah, thing about it. And then the architecture as, as, a, as a work, as a profession, I would say um, we, we like to see it as a process, not a product. And by that it, it becomes a journey. And um, the end result of that journey uh, can be a story then. And if we achieve that, then we're happy. Yeah, then we're happy. Then we think we, we uh, achieve our goals in a way. If we can tell a story about it, because we're working a lot in private, for private clients, and um, the human components, they, they enter there, and then we, yeah, by the plot of land, by the existing house, we just try to, to work with these four dimensions. It's very, very basic. And um, yeah, try to tell this story. And it will continue to change. You know, you have plants that will grow inside, outside, you have new furniture, you have new items that you will place, you have new children that come, people that fall away, you have animals that come. The whole thing, the DNA, will change every single day, almost uh, nature, the seasons that you will experience in your house. And so that's why I would say it's always a process. Hopefully, a positive process on people's lives. Yeah, it's definitely mm -hmm. a process, yeah. Um, yeah, so. Combination of basic elements that are very important to architecture is light, major, uh, material, form, time, and how the, sense, how the senses relate to that. It's a matter of. Um, a combination of both of these factors that will combine and create a space. Here at COCA we like to grab that and tell a story between the client, us, the object and turn it into basically a story which we, afterwards we can see, okay, we can identify and be proud of basically. So what can architecture do? So I'll start this time, yeah. I'll try. So, we are very positive people, so we say that architecture can actually enrich people's lives. And in that sense, we believe that it can bring people together and it can make people happy, that it can actually have a positive impact on their life, that sometimes it can even keep people healthy or make people healthy in that sense that we're playing with lights, make sure people have enough daylight, make sure the proportions are right. So, like Protogoro said, man is the measure of all things. So, which we actually take into every project that we do, we really go into the last centimeter, make sure that people see a plan on the, on the meter square, but actually you live in the volume. So you have to make sure that the proportions in all ends are correct, that the materials that you use, the haptics, the acoustics, the shawl, that everything actually w works, for, and, uh, and that not only architecture, residential, but public, everywhere. And some of it even works for the, for the external space, if you have urban space. And yeah, it's a dialogue, basically, between all these elements that make architecture. Yeah, I mean, there's even this saying, I think it only exists in, in German, alles ist Architektur. So in English, yeah, everything is architecture, and architecture is everything. Mm -hmm. I mean, to non-architects, to clients, they think we're crazy, basically, but I think we all understand that it's basically it's the built environment, if you wish. And most of the environment, I think, is just uh, built coincidentally, just like that, like zone industrial or something like that. But when it's, uh, it's, when it's planned, when it's intentionally built, I think, um, yeah, it's like you, for instance, European old towns, um, everybody wants to visit them because they have this quality that goes beyond uh, the pure two-dimensional image. It's, it's uh, olfactive, uh, haptics, acoustics, and then you, you create these really, really, I wouldn't say magical, because it's just architecture. It's not magic. These architectural uh, space of very, very high quality. And by that, society suddenly takes 
play society happens. I think it's just, it, I mean, we all know architecture is a very, very basic profession. And, um, well, this is what can, uh, architecture can do, I guess. It's, 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 architecture maybe itself is a tool as a society. Yeah. It, it's all the architects working in, in a country, in a city, and the end result in the end uh, reflects what's going on. So, yeah, you can use it as maybe as well as a, as, a, as a tool to see how far has society come until now. Where are we standing? Where are we going? So it's a manifestation of what's going on also of politics, mm -hmm. in a way. Because very far. I mean, it's a, such a vast topic well, it's such a vast field, it's not a topic, it's such a vast field, architecture, that you can um, approach it from so many angles. And uh, you're always able to, 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 to find elements where you can start a discussion, or you can bring it into any, almost any forms of uh, discussions. Yeah. Yeah, architecture was, has a powerful tool of also um, teaching, in a way, society how to live and how to direct through the years. Um, architecture, since you know, the old days, was meant to create spaces for people to the scale of the human, uh, which then the human related to the architecture. And in a way, uh, this powerful tool was only not only to impose or create a space, but also to um, give a certain guidance on uh, uh, either um, a project which was of great importance and the quality was reflected uh, by this and that's why we have spaces which are timeless which last forever because the scale and the proportion whoever was the architect did it right and this is timeless it right so architecture in a way uh, is supposed to be timeless when it's good um, Mm. Yeah, to go, yeah, can architecture do I mean, it's Basically, it's, it's an improvement of circumstances, an improvement of, 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 of lives. I mean, we're living here in Luxembourg, the weather is very, very bad. So, you know, it's, in a way, it's a very important factor, actually, here in Luxembourg, I guess. And uh, there's a lot to improve this, and there's still a lot to do, especially how people work with light here. Still tiny houses, small holes in the facade. And I guess there's so much more to do here. So that's maybe a very specific point what architecture, uh, architecture can do here in Luxembourg, for instance. Improve all these, these lighting uh, aspects, yeah. Mm. Then the next question. Um, how do you position yourself in the discours de l'architecture? Yeah. Um, should I start? Yeah, you start. Okay. <laughs> well, there we just yeah. To I'm not sure if I if I got this question right, but I guess it's like, it's also it might also be you can understand it. How do you position yourself on the market? Hmm? On the discours the market, and it's so. What is our specific approach as Coca as an, as an, as a business? So I would say, of course, we share a lot with other architectural offices. We do our renovations, our projects, and, and I would say 80% of how we approach a profession, a project, is the same. So we don't reinvent the wheel. But so if you ask us what we would like to be, or how we would like to position ourselves, I, I think it's what I said before already, it's that um, working beyond the two-dimensional image. So what you see on pictures, on plans, 3D perspectives, and blogs, and all that, I mean, it's, it's two-dimensional. And uh, we still believe that um, other aspects like haptics, acoustics, and the olfactive mm -hmm. can play, should play a very, very large role. And we tried it out actually in a few projects, and it, it, it turned out to be to, to work, yeah, to our satisfaction, to be honest. And we would like to, to improve that, especially haptics, working with natural, materi uh, natural materials, and by that also olfactive, which works very strongly with the memory. Of the human brain, so you have these. So you could, for instance, listen to a client. He, uh, he or she tells you about, about a memory from their childhood, and maybe you bring that that smell into into a space. 
but morning light shines on a specific stone, on a wet stone, in the rain, I don't know, and they, there are smells that are developed. And you could bring that into a project. Things you don't see later when you take a picture and you, you post that on the blog, okay, you have a nice text, but hmm. So it goes beyond that. And we, we just try to satisfy the customer, the, the customer, the client, the maître d'ouvrage, in the way that he's satisfied on that level as well. That would be like, that we may achieve us, yeah. That would be a big achievement, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's why. I, I guess what I would add there, what is maybe a little bit special for us is our international background, where we position ourselves That's maybe true. a little bit in the Luxembourgish discourse of the architecture, because we come from, well, Eric and I we were born and raised in Luxembourg, but then we went on to Austria, Eric stayed a little bit longer in Austria, went to England, worked in London, then went to Ghana, worked in Ghana, and then came back here, Thiago was in, in Portugal, had his pro pro early professional life, his studies there, and we all know there's some influence as well from the South Americans. So it's all this nice cultural, social uh, history that these backgrounds that we come. Yeah, just really nice diversity. And when we bring a new project in, sometimes it's like a jacuzzi of ideas. Yeah. <laughs> and we just, but that's true, that's it's, really interesting. It's, it's ne that's never like a, a second where there is no idea, it's just the... It's different backgrounds. Yeah, which is such a magical... Uh, Combination. Yeah, and it's such a positive and such a... Uh, for, for everyone, for us, for, for, for every single project, there's, there's everywhere a, a special bespoke solution for each and every client. Um, yeah. Which is nice. It makes it fun for us as well. Yes, and also in a way we also try to relate more uh, as we can with uh, a, a client so we really know about himself more than he knows about himself. <laughs> yes. So we can actually you know, extract all the information we want to a project which he can relate because it's his project, it's made to measure, mm -hmm. and we can be happy with. So in a way for us, the pleasure we get in the end is that the client is happy, mm -hmm. and we are happy with what we've done. And this is for this is a journey, which we go from zero, and there's many obstacles. And then if we achieve that pleasure of the client, it's our pleasure as well, if it's well vetted. Psychology plays a big role as well. well. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A very very big role. And we are surprised by how much that plays a role every day, yeah. on the telephone and and. Because, yeah, most of our clients, are, it's private clients, and it just goes deep. And we have clients where the <coughs> parents recently died, and you have, uh, so we have births of people, we have deaths of people, we have people that move, and we have people that come from different backgrounds, mm -hmm. and are married. We have people that, that divorced recently after finishing the project. So these, and these are really deep emotions. And by that, and adding to this, um, for most of the clients, it's the time in their life when they, are, uh, they take the, the, big, the largest credit. They never, before and later, uh, play with that, that large amount of money. So from the beginning, actually, the nerves are really... You know, it's, it's, uh, it's a delicate some, situation. They give it into somebody's hand that they sometimes don't even know. Yeah. No? But they, the, the, the confidence has to, and, and always grows from zero to a hundred. And it's such an intense journey together. Yeah. Trust is important. Trust. Yeah. Trust. Yeah. Maybe that's if you ask ourselves how can we position ourselves. Yeah. I mean, that's uh, trust is important to, to really, um, yeah, that, that's a goal that, that people trust us. Simple as that. Mm -hmm. Simple as that during the whole journey. Because once on a project when trust is lost, it's very hard to get it back. And then, then there are these long emails, <laughs> yeah? these really harsh emails, and, and there you lose a lot of time. So, so it's really important to keep people to, to, so that they have the feeling that they can trust you. Because there's so much... Mm. Uh, it's also a process. It's not in the first meeting that you achieve it. It's not in the second. Mm -hmm. But it's a course of how you relate to them as well. How you respect their ideas or their uh, goals. How you explain that to them, how you relate to them. And how, in the end, this exchange of uh, information is done uh, 
that you get to basically arrive in the end. I mean, honesty is important. Yes, honesty yeah. and honesty, trust. Honesty, well, that's maybe the, the major tool to achieve that trust. Is she has to be plain and honest. Sometimes it's hard when people are really fall in love with a certain piece of design yeah. or with a certain color or an idea or a thatched roof, I don't know what. Uh, sometimes it's a little, it's a little difficult, but um, you shouldn't lose time by, by not telling them. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, sometimes there is no idea at the beginning. From, from the client just comes and says, oh, I got this, I don't know what to do with it. And then it's up to us to come up with something and just inspire. And, mm -hmm. just, and later on when the project is finished, they go and they have inspiration forever. And, it, and that, that's really, really positive. Yeah. And that's what architecture actually should do as well. Make people happy and inspire them to live their life to the best they can. Mm. Yeah. yeah, we said it with a, with a hearing and smell. Well, basically, we try to achieve an architecture uh, for and with the senses. That would be a main, main goal, to really enter space. And, and that all the senses are, are triggered mm -hmm. in a way. Mm. Not only the visual. Yeah. And so. feel and see the seasons. I, always, I think for us that's always important. The yeah, way we orientate the houses, the way we organize the houses, that you actually, that the inside and the outside, how that relates, it's, uh, yeah. it's nice. We have some projects where you sit in the living room and you think you're part of the outside. Mm -hmm. The, the that's, seasons. Is, yeah. yeah, that's maybe the next question. Okay. Uh, uh, what okay. is your design method? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, um, our design method, well basically, we really had to think about this because it just comes out of the glass, just a good thing, we just start working because we all learned it, we are architects, so. But um, if we analyze it, I think it's like we, we start first with talks, it's a discussion. Later on, we do, everybody goes on his or own, uh, own and does some research. And then we come back, we do uh, sketches, like, oh, oh, Let's well, like this. <laughs> the sketch is presented to everybody else. The sketches are very, very fast. Not sketches you can present to client. They're just too fast for that. Mm -hmm. And then it's again discussions. And this is like a circle. And after that discussion, it's again research, sketches, discussion, and it's it just goes on. And then later on we work. I think in ninety percent directly in, on on three D then uh, on the computer. We do plans, two dimensional plans, three D. But uh, we'd like to build more models. Talked about that. Model building is something um, that we want to continue or restart again, especially bringing that into correlation of the architecture of the senses and smell and all that, because you can bring that already in a model. So that would be something uh, we would uh, emphasize on in the future. Yeah. And I think we, we do this process of designing until we have like, a strong idea. Because you can, we believe we can do an architecture that the client likes or dislikes and then they start uh, fiddling around with it. Now I want the kitchen there and I want the bathroom over there. And suddenly it's, you can't recognize it. Yeah, it's a dilution. Well. So what you need to do in order to avoid that is that um, you need to have a strong idea. A strong, one, one strong idea it can be, I mean we have now, let's find some one project where we build a bridge in the garden of the people. So they are up in the light. So it's a bridge, and they never asked for that bridge. They just wanted to have their barn refurbished. And they said, oh my God, they are in the dark there. They never have something like they need a bridge. So it's this additional thing, but it's so strong that the rest of it is just, it's just you work. I mean, Around where, the yeah, they, so suddenly you come up with something new the client didn't, uh, didn't expect. And that's what we try to achieve yeah. when we design, having one really strong idea. And until, until the level that, let's just say, plastic windows are not important anymore. It could even survive with bad choice of materials when the idea is strong enough. Yeah, that's in a way, mm -hmm. in, in a way how, we, how, we, how we work. Mm -hmm. It's also basically trying to get this a very, well, to get that idea, you have a journey. You sketch a lot and you arrive on nothing and then perhaps in three weeks You've been working on something, you haven't achieved nowhere. And perhaps in 30 seconds, you're there. 
So it's very ungrateful to put that design method. It's a search, continuous search until you get a strong idea which can relate to the project and for us it's the best idea because it's strong. Uh, and um, sometimes it's a desire of a client, sometimes it's like Eric said, it's something that comes naturally. Uh, but in the way it's a process of hours, searching, sketching, talking. Sometimes. And I would, what I would like to add is that it, sometimes it can take uh, days or even weeks. So actually the, the sketching or designing of a, of a single family house, you can do that within a few hours. Mm -hmm. But to have the good outcome from the first talk with the clients until they, we present the Avant Projet Sommer, we, it needs to be weeks, even though we're not constantly working on it. Of course not, we're doing other works, but it's constantly in, your, in the back of your head and you're thinking about it. And there is a filter in our head of whatever we, books we read, and things we saw, memories, mm -hmm. um, and it just goes through that filter. It just needs some time, so time in a way, by itself, without manipulating time, without working, just needs time. So you have the client, the approach, the wishes, and then you do nothing. You just wait weeks and weeks, and actually it's not really working, but something is happening, definitely. And then, if you're forced to react quickly, it's a completely different outcome than if you would have done that in the very beginning. So only by just waiting, in a way, you are able to do a quick, good sketch. On uh, what I mean by good sketch, not the not the artistic drawing, but but what's on it, the concept. You come up with a good concept, but just wait. It happens to me all the time. Mm. Sometimes it's just wait. I don't have an idea. Let it rest. Mm. Just let it there, and it just something is going on there. Not sure if, if and, that, and often it doesn't come actually, the, the, definitely the beginning where you don't need the computer. Sitting behind the computer, it may not come. For me personally, that's a very personal thing. Yeah, I need the that. horizon. I go there, outside where we have the fuller shots you mm -hmm. see there, or I drive in my car, or I'm on the train. Back in the days when I took a lot of the train, it clicked in the train, and I was sketching in the train. Sometimes I did the whole house in the train. Mm -hmm. Crazy, but... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I did my journey from London to Luxembourg and went back and said, here, the project is there, mm -hmm. just draw it in the tray. And it's just this horizon, this, I don't know what it is, it, nature inspires. Yeah, nature is important. It, 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 sitting in a, in, a, in a dark room is not inspirative, inspiring. That's what yeah, nature, nature is a, a big source of, of inspiration as well. To me personally, it's light, light in nature. Yeah. In the forest, I think it's just unbeaten. Right? I mean, every, almost all architecture tries to, to, to get there. So um, it's it's like a, a, a threshold, an uometer, something where you measure your work. Sometimes you, you see in the forest Which, something um, lying there, the way the composition is of the, the moss, how do you call that? Moss. Uh, moss and yeah. the flowers, and it's just this composition. It's like, wow. Amazing. Yes, <laughs> I've been trying to do this for forever and I don't get it. And you, nature, thank you. Yeah. No. Harmony. Yeah. yeah. So sometimes we ask also uh, if you have role models like uh, Fiebilla. Role models in architecture? Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, I think everybody else, uh, I think everybody has his or own role models. Me personally, I like uh, John Lautner. Do so we have the book? Where is it? I understand. We yeah. share that one. Yeah, it took me very long to buy this really, really nice book. I don't know if you know it. You know the book? Yeah. Um, and then I have my, with my uh, Danish heritage, my father he comes from Denmark, so I have a lot of Scandinavian influence from Paul Kjell, um, designers, basically. Mm -hmm. Architects, Danish architects, not that much. And role models. Yeah, Peter Zutta, I like him a lot. Like he manages to keep himself, like he positions himself on the market in the discourse. He's like really very strong. Almost, almost helpful. So strong. So I respect that a lot. Yeah. And how he works with the rawness of materials. And I like that. We have Paulson in London. Oh yeah. Yeah, we'd share that one again. And then some of the brutalists in Africa. So a, then a lot of native people don't like it, but if you really deep go into it, it's it's really nice architecture from the 50s, from the 60s, even 70s. Yeah, and they're going back to it, and it's getting more and more low energy green. So it's a nice time down there. Yeah, which is inspiring as well. 
Uh, sorry. Pardon. From my background, I think, mm -hmm. well, I, since I did all my studies in Portugal, uh, as a scholar, uh, the university teach about the masters, Portuguese masters, also mm -hmm. international. But I have to say that Soto mm -hmm. is a, a big influence on me as well as, well as possible. Mm -hmm. um, of course, then also with my Portuguese heritage. Siza and um, for now one of my old teachers, uh, Iris Mateus, is also, I would say, a big source of inspiration. Yeah, so we agree on all of that actually, <laughs> and that's really interesting. I understand. <laughs> actually, and honestly, there are too many. Yeah. Honestly, there are too many. But and these maybe, are the classics, these are the main ones, don't they? Yeah, there's a lot of influence, a lot of respect, and there's these masters in architecture, I would say, um, that were at this really, really strong personality. It's, I have the feeling it's not that, the, yeah, this vanished, now, now it's more teens. If you say uh, Bjarke Ingels, but to me he's more like a pop star, definitely a very talented artist, he's amazing, huge, but he has a, a really, really big team behind himself. Although, um, compared to that, like John Lautner, for instance, that to me is that's like more role model because it was really one brain. I'm not sure, sure if that's still contemporary, to be honest. I think, I think what I see with all the regulations we have nowadays, you need a big team. So the days of a John Lautner are maybe just over, which makes me a little sad, to be honest, because this guy could just play around his base. But his results are just amazing. And I think, and I think they, they still work as a source of inspiration and these buildings maybe are more role models than him as a, as a person. I don't know him, I was there for some time. But seeing that and what happened there in this optimistic time in Los Angeles and this uh, strong belief in the future, I think that's just, to me personally, I just like that, this Hollywood. Yeah. But we, we, sh we share that can-do approach, this flexible approach. Yeah. Uh, we are very, very positive in that sense. Always this. Yeah. I think the simplicity of, it, of a project, no matter who sometimes the architect is, the simplicity and the usage of the materials is the ultimate sophistication in the end. Which means that uh, the combination of material, color, light, form, all into the project, and if he, you can see immediately if you were late or not. Something that is very, you just see if it's good or not. Yeah. And this is also, an, it's not an, an architect or an inspiration, but it's the source of inspiration for us as well. That um, pure, purity of materials and the form and the light, which just floods the space and just creates atmosphere, mm -hmm. basically.